This video is supported by Skillshare. This, first of all, is a complex topic to talk about, especially for my channel, because whenever I approach a technical topic, I always bring in the strategic side of the story. The reason is simple. Technology is the biggest single factor, but never the total equation. And sometimes, ironically, it's not even the most important factor. The space industry is a very good example of that. For the longest time, rocket launches has been a government supported endeavor and before spacex came in the perception was that an ordinary silicon valley startup founder would never be able to achieve what boeing has done in the past 50 years especially with such huge entry barriers in resources and know-how but as it turns out it can be done as spacex did in the past 50 years my point is oftentimes there are inefficient but rational factors that are hard to quantify, but just as real a factor as those technical ones when decisions are made. So with this understanding, let's talk about the changes of BFR over the years and what brought it to where it is now. So far, the development of BFR has been through three phases. I call them ideation, experimentation, and evolution. The first phase spent across almost half a decade, from 2012 to 2016. It started off with the development of Raptor engines and ended on September 27, 2016 when SpaceX CEO Elon Musk unveiled detailed plans of the Big Falcon rocket at the 67th International Astronautical Congress in Mexico, effectively ending our speculations on BFR. During this phase, Elon and the team had to finalize the objectives of the vehicle and thereby what kind of missions it would be able to perform and what power levels we should expect. Strictly speaking, BFR's ideation started in 2009 because of the development of Raptor engines. But at the time, BFR was not even called BFR. It was conceived as Falcon 10 and Raptor engine were also called Merlin 2 because it was supposed to be an upgrade to Merlin 1. SpaceX wasn't that ambitious and Elon was also not as confident as he is now. It's hard to imagine how fast SpaceX has grown. In 2010, SpaceX was tiny in the industry and it is not until the middle of the year was Falcon Eye successfully launched for the first time. So this is a phase where BFR's design changed most rapidly because SpaceX does not yet know what future is in store for itself. The progress of BFR is secondary during this phase and is subjected to change when SpaceX learned new knowledge with Falcon Eye landings and launches. Most material resources are still being spent on Falcon Eye and drastic changes to BFR's design were being made because most things are not yet materialized. Here's a snapshot of that. As you can see, the development of Raptor engine went through a period when the engineers at SpaceX wanted to match it to the power level of the famous Rocket Eye F1 engine. BFR itself also went through a similar phase. Its size went to as tall as 180 meters and the power level of Raptor went to as high as 7,500 kilonewton four times its actual thrust now. Many details of BFR were also debated and finalized during this period. Methane as propellant was decided then, outcompeted many formidable foes. The spaceship layout also went through iterations of debate. Started with a propellant, crew, unpressurized cargo and engine configuration from top down and finalized on a crew, cargo, propellant and engine configuration. To compensate the inferior offloading ability, Gentry Crane was also designed to move heavy cargoes down. And these are just a small portion of examples of details discussed and finalized during that period. During this phase, BFR was vaguely referred to as Mars Colonial Transporter. Falcon Eye was still the main actor on the stage going through rapid development, and BFR's time is yet to come. After September 2016, SpaceX BFR entered a phase of steady progress. Objectives of BFR are clearly defined by then. Human transportations to Mars in the long run, Earth orbit and cislunar missions in the short term. This phase coincided with Falcon Eye's rapid growth, demonstrated its superior ability, and gave a great deal of confidence to engineers at SpaceX. Three international astronautical congresses mark the most important updates to BFR's architecture, and the development of Falcon Eye is also slowly approaching complete. We're currently at the critical final phase of Falcon Eye's Crew Dragon development, focusing on its manned space capability. 
The lessons learned from that would be an important addition to BFR's future development, especially the lessons from the heat shield. This is the period we're familiar with. BFR was announced in 2016 named Interplanetary Transport System and steadily progressed to what it is now. Three major versions of BFR were introduced, the ITC, the BFR, as well as the newly updated stainless steel BFR with Starship and Super Heavy. During this phase, Raptor engines are close to complete, which gives a lot of stability to BFR's design. Again, I want to put ourselves into perspectives here. SpaceX only achieved partial reusability three years ago with the first iterations of Falcon Eye full thrust in December 2015. SpaceX has spoiled us with the rapid and radical progress, but if not for the reusability which was first demonstrated only three years ago, none of what we discussed today about BFR would be remotely possible. That's why this phase of BFR to me is characterized by steady progress under clearly defined objectives. From the beginning of 2019 onwards, we entered a new phase of BFR which I am really excited about. I call it Rapid Iterations. It started with the construction of the Starhopper, testing BFR's initial design, and thus starts its iterations to initially build BFR and improve the capability of BFR over the years, just like what happened to Falcon Eye. On a side note, if you look at Falcon Eye's variants over the years, you'd realize how drastically improved they are. LEO missions for the Falcon Eye version 1.0, GTO missions and trial landings for the Falcon Eye version 1.1, successful landings with Falcon Eye full thrust or version 1.2. SpaceX's ability to iterate and improve its vehicles are amazing, and that's what's going on with the BFR right now. We're at the very beginning of the rapid iteration phase for BFR, and some updates we've seen are as follows. Truth be told, I have my reservations covering BFR because it changes a lot and it's meant to do that. So what I think is a more worthwhile discussion is the inner logic that drives BFR's evolution because that never changes. The first factor that's constant in SpaceX storyline is NASA. NASA paid for Falcon Eye's development in 2008. NASA paid for resupply missions and the development of Crew Dragon. The idea is NASA will also pay for BFR and its development. We can talk about funding BFR with Starlink project all we want, but the truth is, its viability is still uncertain. So until SpaceX knows for sure that Starlink project is so profitable that it could fund BFR in its entirety, aligning BFR's objectives with NASA's objective would be the first smart thing to do. Fortunately, Elon knows this and it is what BFR is doing right now, aligning its objective with NASA's Journey to Mars project which is Moon first and Mars later. The second factor that guides BFR's evolution is its ground facilities limitation and various other constraints. I can see two realms of possibilities here, the known and the unknown. The known part is the limitation SpaceX has learned over the years with Falcon Eye launches. For example, how many times can a heat shield be used without refurbishment? The ground facility that SpaceX is using at Cape Canaveral was built in early 1960s for the Apollo program. The pads were designed to handle up to 53,379 kilonewton of thrust. Therefore, BFR is already above the design level of the pad with 31 engines, each has a thrust of around 2,000 kilonewton. Building BFR bigger than that would be impractical for the launch pad. While they could be upgraded at a substantial cost in time and money, this would also lose SpaceX, NASA, and others all use of the pads during the construction work. These are some of the known limitations. There would expectedly also be many unknown limitations in the future. We have never built such a huge rocket, for example. The tremendous sound vibrations launch a board system for 100 people aboard BFR, the acrobatic re-entry of the Starship, all of which are still big question marks, all of which needs to be confronted within the next decade. At the end of the day, the key driver of BFR's evolution would be its objective to send humans to Mars. That is the end goal, but the factor that shaped the final BFR would be its constraints as well as partner requirements, especially what NASA needs in the future. It's a grand project, SpaceX can't go it alone. SpaceX has surprised us with the tremendous achievement of Falcon Eye in the past decade. It's BFR's turn now. As the space industry gets more futuristic, the way we learn things has also changed. Skillshare is an awesome online community with over 20,000 classes in analytics, business, technology, and more. 
You can think of it as a toolbox that helps you improve your skills when you needed it most. Want to start your own company? Why not check out this fantastic Skillshare original course on entrepreneurship? It takes you from brainstorming startup ideas to validation, from creating your first MVP to building the team. All of that taught by a seasoned investor, Albert Wenger from Union Square Ventures. I like this course a lot. The first 500 people to sign up with the link down below will get a two-month free trial. So sign up today and start bringing changes to your life. By doing so, you also help this channel. So big thank you from me as well. All right, that's about it. I want to thank my Patreon supporters, all of you guys on the screen right now, for your continued support and encouragement. Videos like this, frankly, take some time to make, and your encouragement and feedback are very welcomed.、Uh, For those of you guys who want to join this small community, just head on to Patreon.com/CuriousElephant for that. I appreciate it. Also, I am thinking of getting some of you guys help me with research, as I know many of you guys are really knowledgeable in this field. So, if you're interested in that, do follow me at Lay Creatives, as I will make more announcements over there. All right, I'll see you on Twitter.